Hello and welcome. We have been exploring many different patterns that we've identified are the hallmarks of inductive reasoning. Many things influence the way we observe those patterns, which can impact our conclusions. We will briefly explore three of these factors in this episode with the goal of forming better conjectures. First, not everyone sees the same things the same way. Second, our observations themselves can be misleading. That is, things aren't always what they appear to be. And thirdly, we have introduced the danger of people taking a very narrow view. We can get tunnel visioned into only looking for that which supports what we already believe. Finally, we will introduce how even really well-founded conjectures can still fail. Even when we try our hardest to see things the way they really are, our view can still be obstructed with things that are part of us. We do not all see the same things the same way because of the different environments we've come from. This is the nurture in the classic nature versus nurture debate. This could be huge, influencing the ways we view things like race, religion, politics, and even ourselves and thus the conclusions we make about such things. What do you see? A young lady looking away to your right? Or an old lady looking down and to the right? Rabbit or duck? The information our senses take in relies on our brain for interpretation. It tries to connect the input so we can make a decision. But this can be a struggle when the input is inaccurate, or the sheer volume of input overwhelms us. Illusions show how we can be tricked pretty easily. What would be your conclusion about the length of each colored line? A closer look reveals that they are the same length, but our brains have trouble committing to that. Here's another one. The posts are all the same height. How many boxes? Three or four? It looks like both. Number of bolts? Our observations and experiences try to help us make accurate conclusions, but they can also lead us astray. Which line is longer? They are both the same length. Which of these two white lines is longer? Line AE versus line DE. We want to say AE is longer, but I'm sure your inductive reasoning skills are kicking in, and you've picked up on a pattern, forming your own conjecture at this point, that the lengths are equal in each example including this one, which is a bit easier to see when the other lines are less distracting. Here are a couple more examples. Which blue dot is bigger? Again, same size. Can these lines be parallel? The markings on the lines distract us from seeing that they are, like these lines that we are convinced are curved when in fact they are parallel. Another thing that can confuse our observations is our brain's need to put things into context. Much of our understanding of what we see is made possible by comparison. In this case, our impression of each gray dot is influenced by the grays that surround them. The one on the left appears lighter, but they are the same shade of gray. We exist in a world of relativity, that can have much more influence on how we see things and ourselves than we think. We can even perceive movement where none exists. There are many things that can disrupt our ability to form clear, unbiased conclusions about patterns, including how we tend to narrow our view of the world to only find the things that confirm our conjectures. Our overwhelming desire to be correct can limit our perspective. 
one more key concept we want to understand with inductive reasoning and our conjectures. Consider the following example. All black bears I have seen are black. Therefore, all black bears are black. Although this may be true for the person making this statement, black bears come in many colors, including white. This introduces the idea of a counterexample, which is any observation, data, or finding that contradicts the conjecture, thus making it false. It only takes one counterexample, and the conjecture is no longer valid. This is an important part of a conjecture. You could say a conjecture's life has three possible outcomes. They are, one, proven and live happily ever after as truths, two, meet their demise from a counterexample, or three, they remain stuck as conjectures, endlessly being explored to be proven or disproven. Like the Collatz conjecture introduced in the last segment. We love to find counterexamples because, well, if you can't be right, the next best thing is to prove someone else wrong. Here are a few examples for you to consider and try to find counterexamples that prove the pattern false. The first one, the inequality x squared is greater than or equal to zero, we make the conjecture that all x's are greater than or equal to zero, as shown in the table. Can you come up with an exception? Since the product of two negative numbers is positive, any negative number would be a counterexample. Example 2. Any three points on a plane make a triangle. This is usually the case, but may also form a straight line. Example 3. All prime numbers are odd. Almost true. Did you identify 2 as the exception? It only takes one counterexample, so this statement is false. The conjecture could be refined to suggest all prime numbers greater than 2 are odd. Example 4. From this equation, we start testing values starting with 1, and the product is 0. The first three numbers we test equal 0. So, we form the conjecture that t will always be 0. Can you find a counterexample? Of course, 1, 2, and 3 are the only numbers that have a product of 0, so any other number is a counterexample. We need to be careful not to form our conjectures too hastily. Study the pattern below, then pause the video to come up with a conjecture that summarizes your observations. In the first row, the first digit from the 13 becomes the first digit in the product. The 3 becomes the last digit in the product. And the middle digit is the sum of the two digits, 1 plus 3, is 4. All four numbers confirm the pattern, so we feel that we can now make our conjecture. The product of a two-digit number and 11 is a three-digit number that begins and ends with the values of the two-digit number and has a middle value that is the sum of the two digits. Try some more values to see if it holds up for more two-digit numbers. It shouldn't take long to find a counterexample. Essentially, any two-digit number whose sum is greater than 9 will prove this conjecture wrong. In this counterexample, the product is 419, which we get if we carry the 1 to the first digit, like in traditional math. We could amend the conjecture or abandon it at this point. Here's an interesting geometry example. Start with a circle with just one point. We see the circle has only one area. Add a point on the circle and connect it to the other point. We have created two areas. Three points gives us four areas. Four points, eight areas. Five points? What's your prediction? Sixteen areas. We'll number them for ease of counting. 
Now pause the video and predict the number of areas when we add one more point, and come up with a conjecture about this pattern. You likely came up with something like, each time we add another point to the circle, we double the number of areas inside the circle. With six points, our prediction is 32 areas. However, the number of areas is only 31. The pattern is broken by the sixth point on the circle. Many things influence how we perceive the world, and they can distort our ability to see things the way they are. We may start seeing things more the way we are. The bombardment of negative news, for example, may result in a conjecture about everything being bad, when that isn't the case at all. Once our conjectures take shape, we tend to look only for things that support our conjectures. If someone thinks that all young people are hooligans, then that's most likely what they'll look for, and find. Perhaps one counterexample could change that perspective. But we tend to not want to let go of our conjectures easily. We hate being wrong. Since inductive reasoning plays such an important role in decision making, we should do our best to make clear, honest observations about the patterns we find. Personal life decisions about health, relationships, and family, or bigger picture ones pertaining to things like the environment, pandemics, politics, religion, etc., deserve our best reasoning effort. Ignorance is seldomly bliss, 